I am standing in a circle with fourth graders in an elementary school cafeteria. I'm surrounded by several other circles made up of students and their teachers. I've asked one student in each circle to mold the air in front of them, creating something with shape and texture, and to pass it along the circle with each student molding it into something else. When we finish the game, I say, we just spent 15 minutes in total silence playing with absolutely nothing. Some of the kids protest, I saw things, yes. How did we do that? Cooperation. We all used our imaginations, our bodies, our senses at the same time. We made the invisible visible. So here I am in this elementary school, 45 years old, married with children, having worked at jobs ranging from corporate sales to working six incredible years with Andy Warhol. But none of my jobs satisfied my hunger for authenticity. See, I had drama in me. At an early age, my mom taught me the song, All of Me. I would sing it for all the relatives. I would sing it for show and tell. All of me, why not take all of me? When I sang, I felt connected to the best part of me. I begged for singing lessons. I got piano lessons. <laughs> My mother dismissively called me a ham. She didn't want to encourage me. Her father had instilled a fear in her. I'll break both your legs if I ever catch you singing in clubs. And she dutifully instilled it in me. I was in plays, I studied theater, but I never pursued it. But now, as I stood in this cafeteria, having just facilitated a transformative experience, this was a revolution in my life. It inspired me to nurture and develop the drama in others and in myself. It was the beginning of 16 years of teaching improvisational theater that brought me to this stage. Improvisation trains the whole person, from the toes up, not the neck up. It teaches people how to communicate their ideas effectively and passionately. It could be an integral part of everyone's education. And in today's world, where it is almost acceptable for us to be having conversations with the top of our heads, completely devaluing the importance of eye contact and visual cues, improvisation can rescue us. To improvise is to discover, uncover, recover. Players may discover that their body language doesn't match up with what they are saying. Many of my female students, no matter what character they are portraying, strike what I call the Victoria's Secret pose. I just discovered the element radium. Kids, hurry up, I have to go to school. I'll say to them, are you aware that your heel is up in the air and your hips are thrust out? No. Once we have established that the media has infiltrated their bodies, and I suggest that they own it, their body language changes just like that. Carl Jung wrote, most people identify themselves with their consciousness and think that they are only what they know about themselves. When you improvise, your analytical side of the mind needs help and you begin to intuit what to say and do. Your unconscious gets stimulated. Memories get triggered. Suddenly, you are tapping into your file cabinet of references. You may uncover a door that you never knew existed, but it was always there, waiting to be open. Improvisation is an amazing process. People say to me all the time, people say to me all the time, you would never get me to improvise. I would be too afraid. I get that. But when you improvise, it creates a safe playground for social interaction. 
you are suddenly shaken out of yourself and into the whole group dynamic. It's like taking off an old bulky coat, freeing you to jump into the game. I have watched a student who is a stutterer who repeatedly cast herself as non-stop talkers. When she improvises on this playground, she doesn't stumble through her sentence, she glides. This, this achievement stays within her. I've watched a seventh grade boy improvise with a 10th grade girl. When he imagines that his best friend dies and he begins to cry, she intuitively wipes a tear from his cheek and puts her arm around him. This achievement stays within them and within the group. This demonstration of empathy. So here I am today. And just like the kids 16 years ago in the cafeteria, we are imagining, shaping, morphing ideas together. We are collectively thinking about the possibilities of how we can better connect to our world, our environment, our communities, to each other, to ourselves. And there is nothing more powerful than to be in the present moment with one another, our minds and hearts open, actively listening and sharing. And this experience is what you experience when you improvise. <laughs>